All right, my friends, welcome back to Podcast 54 of 2019. I'm your host, Kiev O'Neill. You can tweet me at OBKiev or tweet us at The Odds Breakers. Follow us on social media, slash The Odds Breakers. This episode is being brought to you by MyBookie.ag. For a 100% sign-up bonus, please visit MyBookie. Use the promo code The Odds Breakers. Terms and conditions apply. If you'd like to sponsor our podcast and website, well, we would love to help you out as well. Please visit theosbreakers.com, click shop, and for seventeen ninety nine a month, you can be a premium member and get my picks and premium picks before the line moves. If nothing else, please visit theosbreakers.com, become a free picks newsletter subscriber. All right, this is going to be a fast podcast because I am on vacation, Mission Beach. What a crazy Awesome Saturday. Um, not too many upsets. Florida was very impressive beating Auburn, but um, I'll tell you right now we are we are six and eight down a few units, and it was all because of that one game, Troy versus Missouri. How did they score three points the whole second half? That over was looking so good, but we missed it, and uh, unfortunately, that kind of ruined it. But you know, still kind of treading water here. But the NFL is decent. Uh, four and three, and uh, we'll still have a big Monday night play with the San Francisco 49ers, so we'll see how that turns out. The uh, I got to tell you, the Jets, <laughs> they're awful, and uh, <laughs> uh, the Eagles covered that spread pretty e- easily, and uh, we're just doing a quick recap here. Uh, Sam Darnold, he's, he needs to stop going to high school makeout parties. All right, he really needs to stop doing that because this team needs him very, very bad. So, uh, uh, you know, enough mono. Uh, uh, you know, make sure you don't get yourself in any more trouble. Just get back to the Jets and start playing some football because this team is pretty bad. And the Redskins was really interesting, leading the Patriots. I think all the way till halftime, and then the Patriots obviously turn on the gas. But man. I've lost a survivor, survivor uh, pools. were probably a little bit nervous during that game. Uh, the Bears completely choked against the Raiders. The Raiders almost choked, but the Bears, I mean, the special teams coach, they're up by four points with a few minutes left, and they go for a punt block, which is obviously going to rough the kicker, obviously. And then when it's fourth and one, there's too stupid to see the uh, fake punt coming from a desperate team in London. I mean, I mean, there's peewee football coaches that are smarter than some of the Bears coaches right now. Peewee football. I'm not even talking like high school. I'm not. I'm not even talking like like uh, middle school. I'm. I'm talking peewee coaches are smarter than some of the Bears coaches. It's just. It. It just ceases to amaze me how bad these uh, these guys are coaching football. It's like how the hell do you guys get a job? But uh, it, it's amazing to me. But hey. Congrats to the Raiders. Uh, the Packers uh, destroy the Cowboys as well. Uh, Matt LaFleur, give him nine days. And phew, uh, that was another one we lost. But uh, free picks in the NFL went 3-0. and So I was pretty happy about that. All right. Like I said, don't have a lot of time. Got to get back to the beach. So we're going to go right into college football. Week 6 misleading final scores. UCF versus Cincinnati. Oh, so happy about Cincinnati. I mean, our Tulane and Cincinnati play, if they can both get to the American Athletic Conference Championship, we're gold. UCF outgained Cincinnati by 82 yards, yet lost the turnover ratio 4-3, to three, so they lost uh, by uh, three points. Mich- uh, Virginia Tech versus Miami. Miami outgained Virginia Tech by 226 yards, but still lost because of a 5-0 to zero turnover ratio. It's absolutely insane. Uh, Texas versus West Virginia. West Virginia outgained Texas by 34 yards, yet lost by 11. Four to one turnover ratio helped them blow it. Ball State versus Northern Illinois. Northern Illinois outgained Ball State by 119 yards, yet lost by seven. Bad efficiency there. Bad efficiency in IU. But screw them anyway. They uh, screwed my Vanderbilt ticket last week. Marshall versus Middle Tennessee State. Marshall outgained. Middle Tennessee by 177 yards, yet lost by 11, 4-0 turnover ratio. Maybe some value on Marshall. 
Memphis versus Louisiana Monroe. Louisiana Monroe outgained Memphis by 40 yards. It lost by 19 points. Just terrible efficiency for Louisiana Monroe. Libertyville versus New Mexico State. New Mexico State outgained Liberty. Did I say Libertyville? I meant Liberty. Liberty by 62 yards, yet lost by 7. 3-0 to zero turnover ratio. Oregon State versus UCLA. Man, UCLA, woof. <laughs> UCLA outgained them by 44 yards, yet lost by 17 with no turnovers. That is absolutely terrible. All right. All right. Let's move into... College football week seven betting spots, Florida LSU. Um, that's a letdown spot. We're going to start with letdowns. Uh, Florida beat Auburn. I, I mean, they should be prepared for LSU, but they beat a big Auburn team. Tough game. It's a small letdown spot for Florida. Cincinnati at Houston after beating Central Florida. That baby moves past seven. I might be a player on Houston. Texas Tech at Baylor is a letdown spot after they beat Oklahoma State. Central Michigan hosting New Mexico State after beat, beating the hell out of Eastern Michigan. Oregon State at Utah after beating UCLA. Get up spot. Iowa versus Penn State after they lost to Michigan, only scoring three points. Washington at Arizona. Uh, Washington lost to Stanford. Just brutal. Miami hosting Virginia. I mean, is Miami ever going to pull it together? Michigan State at Wisconsin. But, man, they might be a bit beat up by that Ohio State game because Ohio State is the truth this year. Eastern Michigan against Ball State. So that's kind of a get-up spot. It's like you just got your ass kicked by Central Michigan. Come on, man. Uh, Look-ahead spots. Michigan looking past Illinois to Penn State. ASU could be looking past Washington State to Utah very easily. Uh, Penn State could be looking past Iowa to Michigan. So kind of tells you that Iowa might be the play this week. Let's move right into our Big Ten power ratings. We have Ohio State upgraded again. Man, 27.25. They're right with Bama and Clemson now. You kidding me? I, I put that game at pick them on a neutral field. Um, Wisconsin's upgraded slightly to 19 points, but I still have Ohio State favored by around 11 to 12 points for that game. Uh, Michigan, a slight upgrade to 16 for beating up Iowa. Penn State, big upgrade, 15.5 points. You know, we'll see what happens when they play Iowa this week. But uh, I was low on Penn State, but they just keep winning games. Michigan, slight downgrade. Or, sorry, Michigan State. Sparty, slight downgrade to 14 points from 14.25. It's going to handle Ohio State in the night game. You know, that's tough. Iowa, 13.5 points. Nebraska, or sorry, Minnesota's next. And they stay at 11 points because I was higher on them. And uh, most places are upgrading them. Big disparity, though. ESPN has them at 6.3. Team rankings has them at 2.3. Nebraska, I'm keeping them at 7.5 points. They didn't cover the spread against Northwestern, but it's Northwestern. They're paying the ass. Uh, ESPN has them at 2.7. Team Rankin says them at 4.3. Indiana, 5.5. Northwestern, 5.25. Slight upgrade. Maryland, staying the same at 3. Purdue, downgrade to 0. And some people are in the negatives there, like ESPN has a minus 3. Team bring is minus 2.3. Illinois downgraded to minus 3 from minus 2. And Rutgers lower than whale shit on the bottom of the ocean, which I'll be looking for on Mission Beach here in a few minutes. Uh, minus 15 downgraded them from minus 11. This team is in shambles after firing their coach. Complete and utter shambles. My Lord. Man, Rutgers. <laughs> uh, everyone in the Big Ten's complaints like, why isn't Cincinnati in the Big Ten? You know? Why Rutgers? Well, Rutgers is in New Jersey. It's a freaking huge market. Too bad nobody gives a shit. All right. Coming into our free play, we're taking Texas Longhorns plus 10, 10 and a half, whatever you can find there. This Oklahoma game is always a t- close game. Look what happened when Texas played LSU. They're going to keep in this game. Um, they might lose the game, but 10, and, 10 points, 10 and a half, that's way too much for this. It's a rivalry here. Okay, this game's going down to the wire, and I wouldn't be shocked if Michigan or uh, Texas wins. I mean, Jalen Hurts is not uh, Kyler Murray. He's not. There's some flaws with him. Okay, Oklahoma's defense isn't quite as big. They've only played a bunch of tomato cans. I like Texas here, and I say sprinkle the hell out of the money line. Uh, Texas is a proven team. 
Um, yeah, they're they have, they're weak on defense, but they can score some freaking points, man. Oh, Michelle, he's gonna kill it. I really like Texas here. Take the points, sprinkle the money line, book it. Have as you can tell, I like this play a ton. All right, so D Nasty won't be coming on the podcast to do fantasy, but he did, of course, do the work for us. Sent me the email on his side, so I'm going to quick blow through that. Uh, Bye weeks for fantasy football. Uh, Week six, we have the Bills, the Bears, the Colts, and the Raiders. So um, it looks like uh, some some key guys there, T.Y. Hilton, uh, Mack, Carr for the Raiders, and uh, obviously for the Bears, you're probably not starting too many. Maybe Allen Robinson or Montgomery. Uh, will be buys, and for the Bills, you got Josh Allen, Devin Singletary, Frank Gore, if you're playing any of those guys, Um, and that's pretty much it, but make sure you try to find some people off the waivers. Let's go over the key injuries. Mason Rudolph had a concussion. We'll see how he's doing by the end of the week. Darren Sproles had a quad injury. Wayne Gallman has a concussion. Alex Erickson for uh, Cincinnati had a concussion. Philip Dorsett hamstring injury uh james o'shaughnessy uh knee injury uh, sammy watkins hamstring injury anthony hitchens groin injury chris jones groin injury sterling shepherd a concussion and david johnson a back injury waiver wire pickups we're looking at running back chase edmonds for the cardinals uh, ownership's only two percent he's uh He's important to own if you have a David Johnson, obviously. Uh, Chris Herndon from the Jets, 29% ownership. Gerald Everett from the Rams, he had a great game. Ownership's 8%. Uh, Ito Smith from the Falcons, 14%. He scored a touchdown. Garner Minshew. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater could be a a flyer this week. Reggie uh, Bonifan from the Panthers. Uh, Mohamed Sanu from the Falcons. Uh, Deontay Johnson from the Steelers could be a good pickup this week. Uh, Michael Gallup from the Cowboys. He had a killer. He had a great game. They lost to uh, the Packers, but uh, Gallup had a fantastic game. Tons of yards. I mean, tons of yards. Uh, Darius Slayton for the Giants. John Hillman for the Giants. And Kiki Kuti from the Texans. Players trending up. We have Kyle Allen. Uh, Curtis Samuel, uh, Terry McLaurin, he's trending up a little bit. Uh, plus, uh, Jay Gruden just got fired. So, uh, uh, the, the, you can see the, uh, the Redskins might have a big game next week because whenever a coach gets fired, they usually, it usually fires up the team. Christian Kirk, uh, Chase Edmonds, like I said, it's big time trending up. Tony Pollard, uh, Michael Gallup, obviously, and Mike Williams. Looking at the D Nasty Sleeper of the Week. And D Nasty has Michael Gallup. So thank you, Dave, for coming through, sending me some of your information while I am on vacation. And I hope everybody else listening to this podcast gets a vacation soon enough. Either way, have a fantastic weekend. We'll be back on Thursday or Friday, like I said before, and go get some winners.